Hey guys, Pastor John. It's Wednesday morning. Excuse, actually, it's Wednesday afternoon. Pastor Nick and I are in the church, and and uh, I was just telling him that I I have an idea of where I'm wanting to go with my next uh, lessons, but I'm not quite ready to start recording those yet. So I, I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit today uh, about uh, Ravi Zacharias. I. You know, we it, I haven't said anything since he passed away, uh, but uh, Ravi Zacharias was such an inspiration to me. Uh, I I probably have all of his books, and I have tried to read them all uh, with great anticipation of learning. Uh, my favorite book of his is "Deliver Us from Evil," uh, which is about the Lord's Prayer, and uh, I, I I read that twice. And I think I probably could go back and read it again and still gain more on it. It's just very, very deep with a lot of appreciation for this particular prayer. That when the disciples uh, asked Jesus to teach us to pray, Jesus said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, part of that process that uh, Dr. Zacharias was talking about was, we love to talk about deliver us from evil, but we very seldom like to talk about hallowed be thy name. And he really talked about if we're going to be a people that can cry out for the protection of God, then we also need to be a people that love and honor God and worship Him with everything that's within us. It's the ideal of being completely sold out to God. He, he tells a story, I'm sure we've all have heard this before, but I, I picked it up in that book. The story of if you take a pot of water and you put it on the stove and you let it boil, uh, you know, it, before it starts boiling, if you put a frog in there, you know, he just swims around all day long and actually will just cook himself as the water boils up. However, if you drop the frog in the pot while it's boiling, what will he do? Jump straight out because he feels the heat. And, and the idea behind that is, is that have we, do we become so desensitized to what's going on around us that we start then to compromise who and what we are because of the situations that surround us? Uh, and he, could, he, saw, he says that that's what happens a lot of times, is we become so used to sinfulness or the things that are going around us uh, that we actually uh, are boiling in, in water that should have shocked us. We should have been shocked a long time ago. In fact, he would say that uh, a lot of what's going on in the world around us no longer shames us, but we've gotten kind of used to it. Uh, so, you know, this devotion is going to be short to that. I don't have anything, <laughs> anything long necessarily. But as I thought about uh, Raviv Zacharias, wow, what a, what a life he lived. He, he lived what he said, and he, he carried it out. He started good, and he finished good. Um, his story is amazing. If you ever get a chance to, to read his story, you should. I believe his story is in the book... Uh, 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 East Meets West, I believe is, is the title of that book. Uh, but uh, look it up, you'll find it. It's a great story of how a, a, a little boy, young man, his best friend committed suicide, and, and he was so distraught he wanted to commit suicide himself. And he goes to a Hindu priest and he says, is my friend in heaven? And the Hindu priest says, who knows? I don't even know if I'll make heaven. Uh, what, what a statement to, to make, you know? Um, and Raviv uh, tried to kill himself and was in the hospital. And I may not have the story completely accurate, so I almost hesitate to say it, but somewhere in there he is introduced to a, an American missionary who introduces him to Jesus, and he, becomes, he gets saved. And, uh, of course, he migrates to Canada, I believe, and then eventually winds up in Atlanta, Georgia. But just a, a wonderful man of God uh, who was a great apologetic, although he would tell you I'm not apologizing for anything. Yeah, no, uh, he did have a little dry sense of humor. <laughs> Sometimes hard to pick it up, but just a, a, a wonderfully devoted man. 
I, we're gonna, it's going to be hard to replace that spiritual giant. Uh, he tells a wonderful story in one of his books about when they were kids, they wanted to play tennis. And uh, so they didn't have a tennis court. They were, they were poor kids in India. And uh, he, they didn't have it. So what they did was they, they went down to the tennis court. When nobody was on there, they got out and they walked off and measured the whole court so that they could go to their own yard and measure it off. And they did. So they, they came back and they measured off a court and they drew out lines and they had the court laid out. And they went and got one of Mama's sheets and they tied it across to use it as the net to only discover that they couldn't see the ball. And so they took Mama's sheets and cut holes in them, which was not a good idea. But they cut holes in Mama's sheet. They only discovered then that the ball would go through Mama's sheet instead of going over it a lot of times. And so there would be a great argument over did the ball was the ball in or out, you know, so to speak. But he talks about how that they developed the uh, understanding of the rules of the game. And he made this profound statement that always, that always ministered to my heart. He said, rules are not there to protect rules. Rules are there to protect the game. You know, God has given us his precious word. It almost brings me to tears. God has given us his precious word. And in that word are the wonderful commands of God and Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times we may look at those commands or those directives as rules, so to speak. But God doesn't place the rules there to protect the rules. The rules are there to protect His glory. Have we honored Him today? Are we honoring Him today? If we're going to apply all of the Lord's Prayer to our lives, then it really starts with honoring the, the name of Jesus and honoring the name of God and, and following, following after Him with everything that's within us. I miss Dr. Jeremiah, excuse me, Dr. Zacharias already. But I do know that I was just talking about Dr. David Jeremiah. The reason why I said that, but Ravi Zacharias, a wonderful man of God, I miss him so much, and uh, we're looking forward to the next prophet that God may raise up. I hope that wasn't too scattered for you today. I hope I wasn't too far out on the fringes there. Just kind of speaking to you from my heart today. Someone told me that I do better when I just speak from my heart. So there you go. We'll just call it speak from my heart. We love you guys very much. Praying for you. Uh, continue to stay strong. This thing will end <laughs> one way or another. Go in God's peace.